I'm Paul with Madcap Software. And if you're watching this video, chances are you are a subject matter expert working with an author who is using Madcap Flare and they want to transfer files between the two of you. So they might want uh, reviews from you or they might want you to contribute things and you're going to be using Madcap Contributor to do this. So in this video, I'm gonna cover the two basic things. One is reviews. When uh, an author sends you something, they want you to review, they want you to edit it, give comments and send it back to them. The second part is contributions. When you create a brand new document and submit it to the author so that they can incorporate it into their um, Madcap Flare project. All right, so that's what we're gonna cover. Let's go. Now, when an author sends you topics for review, there are a few ways that uh, the person might want to get this to you. Number one is email, uh, but they also might just put it up on a network drive or even use SharePoint. Okay, so it's uh, let's just kind of go through each one of these. If they send it to you through an email, you're going to get this uh, this email with this file attachment, and you just save it locally. Save that file attachment locally, and then you're going to open it up in uh, Madcap Contributor. Now, if they send it to you, or if they put it up on a network drive or on SharePoint, you can actually um, integrate a window pane in Contributor so you can easily get to it. And then you just double click it and open it. Let's go into Contributor and see how it works. So this is what the Contributor interface looks like. And if an author sends you um, a review package through email, you can just, uh, and you save it locally, then you can just click this button right here. And then you just navigate to the place where you saved it. And in my case, I just saved it in documents and my review packages. And this is the one uh, that I wanna open. It's called music. And I just named it email, just so you know that this is how it was transferred. And you click open. And it's going to open here and you get this window pane down at the bottom that contains all of the files in it because a review package that an author sends you might have just one file in it or it might have many in it. Now I'm gonna close this and, re and open another one showing you a different method. Now let's say that an author puts it up on a network drive. Well, I mean, you can, you can easily just go get that file and uh, download it uh, onto your computer, but you could work with it up there in the network. And if you select view external resources, you get this window pane on the left and you can click this button and you just go find the folder where the author said, I put this stuff and select it. And in this case, I, I selected one that's up there on our network. And here it is. Here's the review package, music network folder. All right. Uh, I, it could be named anything, but I just named it that. And then you just double click the thing. And it's going to, again, open this thing up in here, uh, this window pane down at the bottom where you can access the files. Now, the other way is SharePoint. And again, on the view ribbon, you can come to SharePoint. And you can see I've already uh, added SharePoint server into this window pane. And the way you do that is click this button right here. And then you just put in, paste in your the path to the server, click the little check box, uh, mark and click OK and it'll show up. And then you can go find uh, the place where the authors put these. And in this case, got one right here. I'm not gonna open this one again because you already saw me do that. But that's how you could just open uh, whatever, you, whatever you needed. All right, so let's go back and actually open one of these though. Let's open this one that's on the network drive. And yeah, so we get these files down here. Now, down at the bottom, and all you need to do is just double click each one of these at one at a time to open it in the interface and then work with it. If you see this uh, little button here, enabled switch to TOC view, that means the author did this, sent this in a way so that is part of a table of contents. And you can click that and toggle it and see okay, what part of the TOC did they send you? And it's just another way to view and access these. And you can see, oh, okay, these three topics they sent me, this one is the main one and these two are underneath it. Okay, I get it. So maybe that is some information that you need or you prefer to open up the, the, uh, the files that way. 
But if I go back to grid view, you can see there's more than three in here. These three are what are called the topic files. Those are the main files. Uh, but sometimes you might also see this other little kind of file in here with an FLSMP extension. That's called a snippet. And it's like a tiny little file that's inserted into one or more of the other files, but it's, it's separate. Now, I'll actually open up this topic right here, double click it, move this down so we can see more and kind of move this over. And so you can see it's just kind of like a regular editor in here and just regular text. Now, this one has... Uh, some brackets around it, uh, which people won't see in, in output, but it's just to let you know, oh, something's going on here and you can't click in that. That's because that is that little snippet file. And you can, if you hover over it, you can see the name of it, ACL format in that case. And you could double click it from here to open it, or you could right click and select open link and open it in there and edit away. And so uh, sometimes though, an author might choose not to include these little snippet things. For example, open up this file. And here we have another snippet in here. You can tell because I can't click in there, but it doesn't, it, it wasn't included in the review package. May, the author maybe just decided not to do that. Well, what if you want to um, take some action or tell the author something about this content in here. Well, one thing that you can do is you can add a comment. So you can do this uh, regardless, you know, of what, whether you're dealing with a snippet or anything. And you just kind of uh, select this review ribbon and it's this insert annotation button right here. And I have my cursor right here. So it's kind of near that snippet. But if I wanted to, uh, add a comment about you know, this text right here. I could just select it and choose insert annotation and uh, my comment, whatever your comment is, and the author will see that, okay? So adding comments is one thing you can do. And of course you can click in here and you can uh, delete text and you can add new text. Oops, uh, let's see. I'm just going to type nonsense, but you can see you can just add anything. Now, what else can you do in here? Well, Contributor actually has a lot of stuff that you could potentially add, uh, but some of it's probably going to be more important, is certainly going to be more important to you than other things. A lot of these are on the insert ribbon, and I'm not going to go over all of these because some of these are uh, de definitely more important to most people than others. For example, image, you can insert an image, just put your cursor wherever, and you wanna insert an image, just click that button, and you can see, the, okay, it looks like there's already images in here, but these are, these are actually images that are kind of coming from the style sheet that was included, and so you're not seeing them in the topic, but if you wanna add some, just click this little button right here, Go find your uh, file and add it. You can also do things like change size and position and things like that, but an author might not want you to do that. An author might want you to maybe apply a style to it or something, and we'll talk about that in here in just a moment. So an image is one thing, and you can add screen tips and alternate text, different things like that. So an image or possibly a table. That's another very common thing, and you could just select this down arrow and hover over uh, these uh, little squares and that'll tell you how many rows and columns you're gonna get. And that gives you a very, very plain table. Or you could click the face of it and it opens up this dialog and you can specify how many columns, rows, header rows, footer rows. And maybe the author has a table style sheet and they want you to select that to give it a look and feel, all right? And there's also this whole table ribbon in here to do more table stuff. And the other thing that I think might be really common for people is, is lists. And lists are actually added from the home ribbon. So if I wanted to add, say, a numbered list, I just put my cursor here, select this down arrow, uh, down drop down, and select numbered list. And I can just start typing my gibberish in here and pressing enter and pressing enter. And if I want to go in a level, press click that button. And if I want to change it, change the type, 
right click. Now I right clicked on this thing over here called a structure bar, which these can be very handy, but I'll show you how to turn them off here in a second. And I can right click on this thing right here because that's my second level heading and I could tell it, well, I want this to be a bulleted list in here and right click that and turn that into a bulleted list. So adding lists is another thing you can do. And there are potentially other things that an author might want you to do, maybe applying conditions. You don't know what conditions are, but an author, if it's important, they'll explain it to you. Or they might want you to insert links, hyperlinks or cross-references, or insert something called a variable. But I'm not going to go over those because those are just sort of extra. And if you want to know about any of this stuff, just look in the online help and it'll tell you more and have a conversation with the author uh, who is sending you these things. Now, I mentioned these structure bars over here on the left. They can be handy, just like I just showed you. You can do stuff with them and they show you the structure of what's going on. But maybe they just give you a headache and you're thinking, I don't want to see that. Click these little buttons down here because if uh, they, they can show up at the top too. And so I'm just going to click both of those. And now you just get the basic content there. Now, last thing I want to talk to you about is styles. Uh, some authors may not want you to mess with styles at all, any formatting, just, just add content, they tell you. All right. But others might want you to. So for example, let's say that I add a new heading in here. Oops like that. And I want it to be a heading. So I can go to the home ribbon and I've got this drop down that shows styles, or I can open up the styles window that, over on the right. And it's kind of doing the same thing. Either way, I could go and make this an H2, second level heading. And there's other styles. So that is a block level heading. I just clicked. It was just the cursor's just sitting there. But if I wanted a character level I would select the content and it gives me a different set of styles to apply. Again, talk with the author about what they want you to do and don't want you to do. But that's uh, just a real quick demo of the main things that you're going to be doing when you're working with this. And then when you're all done with the topic, you just click save. Now, how do you get it back into the hands of the author? Well, in this case, I just opened up this from the external resources. And so I just edited it up there on the network, saved it. I don't need to do anything other than tell the author, hey, those things that you wanted me to edit, I did it. They're done. And then the author goes and, and they take it from there. Or if you did the email thing, there are a couple of possibilities. There is this button called uh, return to sender down here. Now, if the author implemented this uh, email integration thing when they sent it to you, you might be able to click this. And that is go just going to open up your email and attach the thing and you just send it back to them. But you might click this and get this and it says, hey, there's not a return address attached to this. That means that the author didn't use this integration. But that's OK. You know where that local file is that you opened. You just after you finish saving and everything, you just go attach it to an email, send it back to the author. That's pretty much it on reviewing files. Again, for more and more details, go into the online help. Next, we're going to talk about the, the other part of this, of the other part of contributor, which is contributing new files to the author. All right, now let's switch gears and go the other direction. Instead of the author initiating the file coming to you, you can create a file and then send it to the author. So you're contributing new content to the author's documentation. Now, an author might do one thing. They might create a contribution template. So they might send you a file that is sort of, uh, it's, it's got the structure, it's got maybe certain pieces of content in it and they want you to use that when you create new files so that you're just sort of following their guidelines. If that happens, uh, what you do is simply uh, you save that contribution template file in your documents folder and I'll show you where uh, right now. So you just navigate to your documents folder and you can create, if it's not already created, my templates and then contributor within that, that's the path. 
And then you just put that file and it's going to have an MCCOT file extension. That's it. And so now what's the next part? All right. So you've got that contribution template and, a, and an author might not even send you a contribution template. Either way, you can create new documents. So in contributor, just click new and it's going to bring up this dialogue. Now you got some factory templates you can choose from in here. And so let's just look at these real quick document. And you can see the file extensions on these. So this is simply what you would create if you just want a standalone document, like you were creating a Word document or something, and then maybe you want to save it to a PDF. All right. This one right here, XHTML document, that's a, a document that's going to save uh, as HTM. So maybe you just want to create a standalone document that you put up on the internet somewhere. You could do that. Style sheet, page layouts, we're not going to worry about because most people aren't going to be doing that in Contributor. They're going to be using these files that authors send to them. But if you want to know more about creating style sheets, working with those and page layouts, which are used with, with print-based output, like uh, you know your margins and page numbers and things like that, you can read about that. This is the one we're really interested in, this one that says Topic MCCOT. So if I select this, uh, from this dialogue and click OK, it's going to create, and I provide a name down here under file name and tell it where I want it to put, where I want to put it. And here I just have this path into my documents, my contributions. So you can put it wherever you want, though. And then you get that and you create that, that document and you send it to uh, the author. All right. Now, that's going to be just using this factory template. But if the author did send you a special contribution template, they want you to follow their stuff. You can select my templates. And there is that, that contribution template that I just showed you. Now I'm going to click OK, and it's going to bring it up. And you can see these are the pieces that the author had in mind. And it's kind of budding up close to here because it doesn't have a margin over there. But you could turn on your structure bars like that, and that gives you a little bit more room. And then you just create the document, add stuff into it. And I'm not going to go into all the things like I did last in the last section, but it's the same thing. It, from the insert ribbon, primarily, you're going to be adding certain things and just content and lists and tables and images and whatever whatever you need to. And then you save it. And again, you can get it to the author however it works best for you. Maybe you send it to them in an email. Maybe you upload it to SharePoint or to your uh, to your network drive. And by the way, if you do have happen to have these integrated in here, like this is SharePoint, and you already have something in here, well, you can just right click on that uh, server node right there and then select open and it'll open it up right here in the interface so you can deal with SharePoint. Same thing with external resources. I could right click that and that'll open up that location in Windows. So it's just right there. All right. That is pretty much going to do it. That is how you uh, deal with reviews and contributions in Madcap Contributor. So thank you so much for watching this video. Best of luck to you. We'll talk to you next time.